Hello and welcome to day 17 of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're going to show you one of my favorite features. It's called blend if basically you can blend any layer based on shadows and highlights. Hey there, and welcome back to 30 days of Photoshop. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you blend if, which is the perfect way to composite basically one photograph into pretty much anything and do this based on light levels. It's awesome for putting new skies into your environments. And that's exactly what we're doing today. So we're going to start off with a basic explanation of how blend if works. So we have, this is our sample image. Now what I'm going to do here is just grab our gradient tool. So let's hit G for the gradient tool. You can click it right there. We're going to go to gradient and then I'm going to go to our basics and we're just going to go to a black to white gradient and then use a linear gradient and go all the way from the top to the bottom. And again, this is just to kind of like explain how blend if actually works. So we have a gradient layer and now it's time to get into blend if you can do this in a few different ways. You can literally just double click right here in this gray area and it's going to bring up your layer style and you're going to see we have blend if and two sliders. Okay. You can also go to FX and then down to blending options and you're in the same place layer style with two layers. I'm going to pump this over to the left hand side because I don't need to see it for now and we'll just bring our image over here to the right hand side. Okay, so we have two sliders. There's a current layer slider and an underlying layer slider. Now, you're going to be a little bit deceived because it looks like these little guys right here, it looks like this is just one little icon. But actually, if you hold alt or option and click out and click and drag on there, it actually separates it out into two little icons. So that's the first most important thing we need to keep in mind is that, you know, right over here and here and on the right hand side here, here, these are all two little icons and you use them to introduce feathering. So let's show you how it works. Okay. Now we're going to start with this current layer. Basically, this just controls visibility of your current layer. Now, keep in mind, my current layer here is a gradient fill layer. It's just going from black all the way to white. So if I take this slider from the current layer and I take this point from the left to the right, what it's doing is it's hiding anything. You see this like, you know, black all the way to white. It's hiding anything that's darker than where this little point is. Okay. So as I bring this from the left to the right, it's hiding the darks of my current layer. And as I bring it over to the right, it's just showing up the lights. Okay. Showing up the lights. It's kind of how it works. Pretty easy, right? To see with that gradient on the right hand side, you're going to click and drag from the right hand side, and it's going to hide your current layer where the light areas are. Okay. Kind of cool. So that's pretty self extended explanatory for the current layer. Now for the underlying layer, this is actually where it gets a lot more interesting and where we wind up using this feature a lot more. You can click and drag this from the left to the right to the underlying layer. And you're going to see, look at this. It's starting to disappear from the shadow areas of the underlying layer. And now it's only visible in the highlight areas of the underlying layer. How crazy is that? And from the right to the left, it's going to disappear in the highlight areas and it's only going to be visible in the shadow area. So it's literally taking this gradient and making it just visible in the shadows. Okay. Now we did talk about feathering. So let's go ahead and bring this over here. So from the left to the right, again, keep in mind, this is just one little control point, but if you hold alt or option, it separates it into two control points. And that's where we're using this most of the time. So let's hold alt or option and click and drag there. And it separates this into two control points. And now this introduces feathering, which gives you a much more realistic result, right? So you can see, okay, we've been feathering them. Just take a look at the ground, how this is, you know, basically just turning this uh, visible. I'll just turn the opacity lower and higher right over here. So you can see now, you know, this was just the white part of the gradient. It's kind of like blending into the ground. Now without the feathering, I'll just bring this in here. You can see this is kind of what you get. You get a, like a very, you know, like a, it's either off or on. You don't have any feathering involved. Okay. So that's why holding alt or option on these sliders is really important to introduce feathering. There you go. You can do that. And keep in mind, you can do both at the same time. So you can have some, you know, control the visibility in the darks and in the lights. All right. And we can hit okay. And this doesn't bake into the layer at any point in time. You can literally just double click right over here and then change your blending. Okay. At any time with blend if now you can also do this based on color channels. If you want to have it not be visible based on certain colors, 
I don't tend to use this as much, but it is there if you need it, okay? If you have like a very colorful image, you wanna hide a layer based on the red values of that image, you can do that as well. All right, let's hit okay there. And then now, like this thing, I just put that in there to show you kind of like the idea of how BlendF works. But what we're gonna do, let's click and drag that to the trash can. What we're actually gonna do is bring in a new sky, and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this sky up here and make it a little bit larger, okay. So we brought in a new sky. I want this to like really look good with my background layer. So what we're gonna do, let's make that invisible temporarily. Let's go ahead and click here on our background and then we're gonna go to select and then down here to sky, to select our sky, boop. And then we're gonna go ahead and click here on this layer and then click on our layer mask icon. Okay, so now we can see this new sky is visible where the old sky was. Now. We have our layer and our layer mask. Now by default, they're chain linked together. So if I were to, for instance, move one of these, the other would move to the layer and the layer mask move together. Like let's grab our move tool here and I'm just gonna like move this and you can see they're moving together, which kind of like destroys the effect, okay? So when you're doing things like sky replacement or whatever, just a lot of times in compositing in Photoshop, you wanna go ahead and click on this chain link to unlink your layer and your layer mask. And now look at this, I can just move the layer and then the mask stays in the same place, okay? So that's kind of cool there. Or I could click on the mask and move the mask and the layer stays in the same place, but that's like a lot less frequent that you do that. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Like it's not bad, okay? But it really kind of doesn't really blend in with my original image that well, okay? So when you're doing something like this, blend if is going to help you blend these two images together. So this is like our practical example of how to use this. So let's go ahead and double click here in the gray area and we're gonna bring this over here. And now where we actually see our practical Im image, you can see based on the current layer. So I can hold alt or option and then click and drag to separate those two out and make the current layer invisible where it's darker. And then basically just the highlights of the current layer show up. So I'll just do this preview. So there's the before and the after. And we can already see that looks a lot more realistic, okay? It's basically just showing up the light areas of this current layer and it's blending it a lot better, all right? Let's go ahead, we can grab this right over here and take this back to the other side, or we can do the other side. So let's hold Alt or Option and click and drag this. And now this is gonna hide the current layer where it's lighter and just show the darks of the current layer in this case, because we're doing a sky, this doesn't work as well, but I just wanted to show you, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and click and track from the left to the right. Okay, next we have our underlying layer. So we're gonna hold Alt or Option and click and drag from the left to the right for the underlying layer to hide where the underlying layer is darker. And that's kind of like in the top of the sky there. Okay, and we can see, basically you just wanna kind of move this and be like, is this better? Yes, no, okay, let's try the other side. That's, <laughs> without getting technical, that's kind of what you do. So this is hiding it from the darks of the sky, which doesn't really help that much in my opinion, but let's try the other side. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and hide it from the lights of the sky, which is actually blending in really well here on the horizon. You can see there's like when I do the lights of the sky, that's starting to look, really blend in and look a lot more realistic. So basically the, original image, like the light of the original image is now showing through because it's blending in. So let's click on this preview, make this invisible, invisible. You can see, yeah, that looks like a much better composition already. Composite, there we go. That looks pretty good. So we saw that, you know, for the underlying layer, not being visible in the light areas of the underlying layer looked good. And we saw for the current layer, not being visible in the dark areas of the current layer looked pretty good as well. So we can use those in combination and you kind of use both of those at the same time to blend them together. So we're hiding the sky in the dark areas and we're hiding the sky from the light areas of my background layer. And we're doing both of those at the same time. So let's just click on this preview. There's the before and the after. We can kind of come in here and drag this just a little bit more and we can just drag that one a little bit more to get a little bit more subtle. There's the before and the after. Not that it looked bad in the before, but it didn't look realistic, right? It totally looked like, yeah, this is just a totally different sky. But here in the after, when I click on this preview, you can see like, wow, that's really integrating with the original light of the photograph. And now we have that sky in there and it just looks real. Like that's, that's all there is to it. It looks real, it looks fantastic. And blend if is a great way to do that. Look how beautiful that is. Fantastic. So blend if, 
when you're doing compositing is insanely helpful. Now, I wanna do one more just like super quick example and use show you how you can use Blendif for things like color grading or color toning as well, because it's a cool use. So what we're gonna do is go to layer I'm gonna go down to new fill layer and we're gonna to go to solid color here. Let's hit okay. And then we'll just give it a blue, something like this. I can change this color at any time by double clicking there. Okay, now let's say we want this to be visible in the shadows. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this layer, okay? And we're gonna use blend if. I'm gonna say for the underlying layer, don't be visible in the highlights. So let's hold alt or option and simply click and drag from the right to the left. Okay, and then just make this visible in the shadows, something like that. So we have this blue layer visible in the shadows. Now, of course, it doesn't look super realistic, okay, because it just looks like a solid blue in the shadows. But now we can change things like our blend modes, okay? We could try from normal, you could try uh, light in, you could go to tr screen, you could try soft light, which will bring you some color here. But what, let's go ahead and put it back to normal and let's just like lower our opacity quite a bit, okay? So now you can see I'm getting a little bit of blue into the shadows, and then you could change this from like normal down to color. Basically just go through your different uh, blending modes, and there we go, something like a soft light or hard light. Let's put it on hard light, and then you can see now we have some blue in our shadows, which is kind of cool, and making that visible and invisible. I can still go in here and say, you know what, make it a, bit, a little bit more visible. We can change that, and that's pretty cool. So now we have this blue color, they kind of like color tones are shadows. But what I could also do is I can double click here on my color at any time and change this, okay? So I could go to like a light pink. I could do this for basically introducing any of these colors into my shadows. There we go. And we can see now this is gonna help me color tone if I wanted to do a red or a pink and have that visible in the shadows, we could do this as well. So this is just with a solid color fill layer, which is kind of cool. The other thing we're gonna do is show you how to use a gradient map. So let's go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and down to gradient map. This is one of my other favorite ways to color tone an image. You can go to your gradient map here. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go into our reds and then choose this red, okay? I'm gonna click on reverse so it looks a little bit more normal. And we're gonna go ahead and lower the opacity up here, okay? So we're gonna see this is now like really nicely color toning our image just how we want it, but you can still use your gradient map or blend if you can double click here and I can say, okay, this looks good, but I like it in the highlights, just maybe not in the shadows. So you can hold alt or option and then just make it invisible from the shadows of the underlying layer. And then it's gonna be visible more in your highlights. So you can kind of get this for color toning and choose exactly how it blends in. Maybe you just wanna do your highlights and then you can still double click on this layer and go ahead in here and then maybe you go to your oranges and you're gonna say, okay, we're gonna do this and now I'm gonna click through here and know that this is actually just affecting our highlights. And as I click through all these different ones, you're gonna see like, okay, we might have some cool oranges that we actually like and that's gonna affect our highlights. And then we can go back to our layers and turn this off and on. And it's just gonna kind of add this like interesting warming effect, but it's not really going to affect our shadows as well. So all of these are great examples of how blend if works. Obviously the whole compositing the sky that makes a lot more, you know, that's a very high impact way of doing it. Let's just turn that off and on to see the effect that we made there. But if you are gonna be doing this type of composite, it makes it incredibly realistic. So basically moral of the story is anytime you wanna make a layer visible or invisible based on the highlights or the shadows of that layer itself, or the layer underneath it, blend if is the perfect way to go. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope you're enjoying all of 30 days of Photoshop. I know I am. Thank you so much and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.